Yes, okay, we're online. People can hear me. Great, beautiful. Hi, everyone. Wow, we missed out on a lot. If you are still here, uh, then uh, this should be fine, and we should be talking and going on drag in Israel. Um, so, uh, wow, so no one could hear me. I could speak for myself, so I'll just start briefly again. And um, we will try to make this work in the very short time that we have. Uh, so I'm Zohar, nice to meet you all. I'm a drag performer, I'm an educator. This is really uh, a new platform for me, obviously, because I couldn't um, uh, be heard and I couldn't operate it for the last half an hour. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about drag in Israel and talk a little bit about drag in general. And I've included less of myself in drag and more of things that I like. The second disclaimer beyond me not knowing how to operate this program very well is that uh, there's so much drag in, Israel, in, drag in Israel right now and um, I've only included here stuff that I personally know better or like or can say different things about. So if you are doing drag yourselves, if you know someone who does drag and is not going, going to be here presented, then by all means, please don't get offended. Uh, I do not try here in this very short time to show everything that we have uh, in the drag scene in Israel. It is immense. So uh, actually, we were looking at the um, the different types and the history, but that is long gone and you couldn't hear me and now we have very little time. So what I wanted to show you, I wanted to talk a little bit about drag as a political art um, and about the fact that I think every drag show um is a little bit um has something hold on so i guess you could see my screen now um and i wanted to show you a few examples of um where drag meets israel in terms of politics because i think there's um something very interesting in doing drag in israel because we are still a conservative society and because the political situation here is uh ongoing uh is an ongoing charged political situation and because there's so much going on with the um questions of identity in israel because israel is a young country that's forming itself i find that there's there are things where there are things where that are very interesting uh in drag in israel um in what it shows and portrays and I wanted to give you a few examples of that. So the, first of all, I want to relate to Jewish identity and how you do Jewish identity in drag. I know that in the States you have a few Jewish drag queens who are also relating to their um, Jewish identity through drag. And I wanted to give you an example of a queen that I know and love very much called Mama de la Smala. She herself is a Moroccan Jew. But one of her more genius numbers that I've seen is her doing the opening act for Fiddler on the Roof tradition. down Mama de la Smala for a second to say that I personally think that in a place that's so again charged in, in questions of identity and um, conservativeness versus uh, progressiveness and um, 
uh, questions of identity in terms of religion and all that, I think that it's fascinating to see how the drag community responds to that. I um, am constantly seeing uh, queens who are doing things about their Jewish identity. Um, yeah, I think it's the only place uh, in the world where there are drag events that are being held, especially for Jewish holidays. So there would be a drag night for Pesach, and a drag night for Purim, and a drag night for Hanukkah, and a drag night for Rosh Hashanah. And there's always something uh, relatable in that for many, many queens. Some of them take it more lightly, and some of them take it more seriously. I want to fast forward a little bit to show you how Mama here changes from man to female, from uh, women to female when she does the matchmaker. That's this. That's it. So if you're familiar with Fiddler on the Roof, with the opening scene, it goes between the different characters in the Jewish shtetl, in the Jewish town, um, between the father, the mother, the son, and the daughter, and we're really seeing Mama crossing here between different gender characters and pulling off more and more and more of that, uh, which I find fascinating. So this is one thing that I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how uh, in drag you can relate to your identity. Uh, your Jewish identity, and obviously another thing that um, really is prominent in Israel, prominent in Israel, uh, is the conflict. And I, there are so many uh, stuff that is done about it. But I wanted to show you uh, a specific number, and I would really love for you guys in the chat box to um, open this and uh, tell me what you think about it. And um, after, like during and after, to really think, uh, type in what you think of the number because it's. Um, very controversial. I was lucky enough to be there uh, on the evening when uh, it played. We're talking about a drag performer called Catalonia von Palestine, uh, played by a guy who is um, uh, half Palestinian um, um, Arab and half uh, Spanish, um, and lives in uh, is originally from East uh, Jerusalem and today he lives in Yafo. Um, and many of the because uh, drag is connected to the gay community, um, I'm I'm not sure if some of you have heard the term pinkwashing. But uh, pinkwashing relates to Israel or other places trying to hide um, their uh, shaky human rights uh, uh, situation through saying that they're giving the LGBT community and by that mainly the gay community, the homosexual community uh, rights. And Tel Aviv has been accused for pinkwashing the Israeli government and the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Tourism were are constantly accused of pinkwashing, saying it's true that Tel Aviv has become um, a haven for um, uh, gay people and especially homosexuals, but it doesn't say anything about gay and uh, LGBTQ people in the rest of Israel who are still suffering. It doesn't say anything about uh, the actual constitutional rights of the gay community in Israel who are still way, way behind other places in the world. Uh, and it definitely doesn't say anything about the way Israel treats other minorities, uh, mainly, mainly with the occupation of the Palestinian territories. So Catalonia from Palestine has done a brilliant job here, I think, whether you agree or disagree, a brilliant performance job in showing the complex relations of um, gay community, Israel, occupation and everything. Uh, the song itself is in Arabic. I have no idea what it's about. And we're going to watch uh, most of this um, right now together uh, just for me to show you. And then I'm going to give you one last example of how identity is dealt with in Israel through drag. This performance was done as part of a queer gender blender line called Kloss. Um, a drag line that started uh, three years ago and has grown immensely since that was originally established by three um, drag queens with a more queer 
twist, we're going to talk about it. The shirt he's wearing is of the border police, which is the main police force that deals with popula Palestinian population uh, in the West Bank. Jibelawiya means give me your ID card, and it's the one sentence that all uh, IDF soldiers in combat uh, officers uh, know. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so that was Catalonia from Palestine uh, in her number about pinkwashing. And this um, was actually performed the night before Tel Aviv Pride, uh, which draws most of the fire in terms of um, having many tourists from around the world celebrating what uh, seems to be the liberal city of Tel Aviv and forgetting with other violations of human rights were taking place by the Israeli government. Um, and I, uh, I attended the crowd that night. It was extremely strong. What you don't hear in the video is there was also a lot of booing uh, in the crowd. And considering the fact that this kind of show, The Cross is drawing Tel Aviv's uh, queer, hipster, vegan crowd, then even from them to get some booing on that shows that it really hit it a very sensitive nerve. Um, and in any case, I think that just in terms of aesthetics, she did it extremely well with the traditional Palestinian dress and with the relation to the ground, to the soil, something that's very central to the Palestinian struggle. Um, I think that uh, there is a lot of, uh, it's fascinating and ironic to think that uh, in traditional Palestinian communities, some such sort of a performance, although promoting the Palestinian liberation struggle, uh, would have been uh, condemned entirely, him being gay, them being uh, very exposed, and of course, uh, all the art of drag, which is something that's um, not accepted very much with traditional communities. The last thing that I have time to show you is about Mizrahi identity. Uh, Mizrahi identity for many years uh, was something that was removed from the drag scene and from the queer scene in Israel, uh, the European English-speaking pop, culture um, and uh, kind of the white Ashkenazi uh, Jew uh, narrative was the one that kind of dominated. Most of the gays were, uh, you know, um, uh, these uh, Ashkenazi uh, leftist voters and everything. And uh, about 10 years ago, a new line of parties started called the Arisa. Arisa is a spicy um, um, North African uh, paste. Um, and Arisa was the first time that they did gay parties uh, with um, um, Mediterranean and Arab music. And it was aimed mainly at uh, people who loved, gay people who loved, uh, who were Mizrahi, uh, coming from uh, Muslims uh, and uh, um, Arabic speaking countries. And for the first time gave them a venue into their music uh, without selection at the entrance and where their Mizrahi identity, their Alsim, Identity, if you're familiar with the term, could be celebrated. And the way they promoted these parties were through amazing, amazing clips. They had a theme for each party, and they had amazing clips uh, that for the first time showed uh, Uriel et uh, a drag character that also combines uh, gender blender uh, uh, features. You'll see him with the mustache, but with very delicate eye makeup. Um, and he's very, uh, his mustache is definitely an attribute to the um, uh, the Eastern men, the Egyptian men of the Egyptian film industry that were the main fo uh, the main um, cultural uh, bringing in to uh, people who spoke Arabic in Israel. My grandmother used to watch them all the time. And he clearly looks one of, one of those Egyptian uh, film stars from the 70s. Um, and here they did a party in the theme of the mama, the... the the, the Moroccan, the, the, the Jewish mother of the, of the, that comes from the Muslim world, the Moroccan mother, the Iraqi mother, the Yemenite mother, and the way they portrayed that and what we're about to see, to me, it was incredible because I felt that it was really showing me my Moroccan grandmother. Uh, the character that you'll see uh, is incredible in um, portraying that very unique type of uh, the matriarch uh, in those Mizrahi family. So let's have a look. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is how we end today, friends. Um, I think it was a fascinating depiction of uh, all the things that are going on. Um, all these blend of identities, uh, a female and a male together in the same character, bring forth that narrative of the Israeli mother, something who was originally very traditional, very religious, um, and also the mother who is escorting her son to uh, the draft units uh, when they're 18 and kind of that uh, traditional Israeli goodbye uh, is kind of put into this queer filter. Um, I was fascinated by this uh, film, by this video when it came out, and I think it's a, it's actually an act of genius. Um, we're ending here. I'm really sorry. Uh, the last thing I want to send you with is that uh, when things are uh, going to calm down and you're going to be going out to Tel Aviv again, um, please make sure to check one of the next lines of uh, drag. It's, it might be The Cross that's doing an annual show, The Cross Line. Check them out online on uh, Facebook and Instagram. You can look up work. W-E-R-K, who's doing a weekly show, the only one who's doing a weekly show at the, this moment uh, with a, an audience of regulars uh, in Kalibach Street uh, in Tel Aviv. Check them out as well, work W-E-R-K on Facebook and Instagram. Look out for Strange Fruits if you're looking for a more queer and theatrical performance. They have a monthly show as well, Strange Fruit at the Tumuna Theater. And you can look out Drag and Drop, uh, which is a relatively new one, or um, uh, Mikve Alma uh, with uh, um, for a more poppy show with younger queens. Uh, so I was Zohar. This was our webinar about drag culture in Israel. Hopefully we'll do another one and I can expand more about stuff that you didn't hear me this time. And we'll get to watch more videos and have more fun. Uh, please uh, contact me through chat or uh, through the Masa platform if there's a way uh, with more uh, requests and stuff that you uh, want to say in comment. And um, I hope this will end soon and we'll go back to meeting each other like human beings. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching and um, have a great day.